You've got mail. Okay, well there's the bell. We'll call to order. You ready, John? Good. Okay. Mr. Meese? Mr. Mr. is doing anything? We do not. We try to avoid that all weekend. People just complain whatever it is, so we quit. Well, good. Thank you. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> we have, uh, um, still working on the lawn. Uh, as you know, we uh, had it uh, working on this spring, trying to get a good lawn up under where the tents are. It's only in the tents. Uh, on the north side and the south side personally has taken over. It's a real wiry, kind of a bushy, kind of a weed, and it has just snuffed out whatever grass we had there. So we talked to the guy and talked to Kurt here from an extension office. They met us up there and came up with a plan. I think they're going to come back in. They're going to uh, smoke it with uh, 2,4-D and Cambrian. And there's a couple other chemicals in this mix called Speed Zone that they're going to use on it to kill the broadleaf, kill the purslane. Then after 10 days, according to the... the uh, paper we got from the guy who does this, uh, then they can go in and reseed, and then we'll put a free version on in springtime and reseed again uh, in the spring. Uh, since we already paid for that, it's not the guy's fault that we didn't have grass, but we already paid for what we thought we were going to have grass, and so he's only going to charge us $1,000 to do the lawn. That's for the materials I suspect that he has to buy to do that. His, his, his crew's coming in on him. So they're going to come in and do that, and then they'll come back, and they're going to aerate uh, deeply again, which they did before, but they're going to aerate again. Um, Kurt checked the compaction. Really, kind of surprisingly, the compaction wasn't too bad uh, under those tents. You would have thought it would have been pretty ugly, but okay, I guess it wasn't bad. Uh, we do notice that on the south side, at the bottom of the slope, is uh, the grass is much healthier than it is up on the top part. So I'm sure it's just because that yard is elevated and stuff leaches out and ends up on the down downhill. And, so we, we approved, you guys approved, and we approved last year putting in a sprinkler on the front side, sprinkler system, because it's really dry, of course, this year, but it's dry all the time anyway. So uh, it, all, only immediate expense we'll have, our obligation for the sprinkler system is to get uh, adequate water and water pressure on the north side. Don and I looked yesterday, we can splice into an inch and a half line coming just past the meter to run it to the front of the courthouse, and we'll mount it there. Um, It'll be outside. It will be out of the uh, northwest with little doors on either side of the stairways. We're going to come out that opening there and mount it there. And then from then on, it'll be the contractor's uh, job to, to get the sprinkler system in. He assures us it will drain in the wintertime. We can shut off the water by leaving it inside the connection inside. So we can shut off that water, drain that pipe so freezing won't be a problem. So we should be getting on that, uh, on that pretty quickly. <laughs> We're still, still haven't pulled the trigger yet. Uh, um, one of the commissioners wanted to look at it one more time. I want everybody's input that we can get. Remember, we talked about those, there are four trees on the corners of the courthouse with the big red berries on them, and they're, all, they're pretty beaten up. One's dying anyway. But we're just hesitant to make any big change to the courthouse lawn without getting all the input we can from everybody. Because you know, half people are going to like it, half are going to hate it. So we haven't pulled those out yet, but we probably will before fall comes. Before winter comes, we'll probably get them down and, and find something in their place uh, come spring. And I think that's about all I got, unless you got something for me. I talked to Don. He is uh, he's getting another quote for the leaks, in the, the two leaks in yes. the basement. It sounds yes. like he's yeah. gotten one, and another one coming later this month to, to look at it. So we have you talking about water and foundation coming yeah, up. Yeah, coming through the foundation yeah. into the basement. Yeah, two and two places. Uh, but I understand. If you know that evergreen, that big tall evergreen on the northwest. On the north side, on the west end, that's right up against the building. That's coming out too, because that's probably part of the problem. Those leaves are now probably in that foundation as well. So uh, yeah, the one the one quote was how they were going to do it. Uh, they were going to allow, allow the water to come in, but they created something to take it back out. Uh, I'd rather have the water kept out in the first place. So we're looking to have some. I agree with that. that. That's not a solution. I that's a band aid. Yeah, I don't think so either. That's just another thing happened to way you go bad. So. Uh, the other guy's going to come look at the ceiling off the front, but it is just sounds sandstone foundation, so right. who and knows what's happening. Sandstone and brick. And, and yeah. So we'll get another quote on that, sure we go, but that, that, 
I'd love to come in and then sump it out. That's not anything I'm interested in doing. <laughs> All I got. Okay, thank you. Kim? <clears throat> you thought I'd forget you back there, didn't I? <laughs> And our tax sale is September 18th, and we started out with like 190, and we're down to 92. What? Still in. Still. And am I correct? I always get asked this all the time. When they come in, they have to bring it up completely up to date. Is that correct? They well, can't no, pay. Well, through the spring. Through the, the, through through the, the spring. Tax sale, they have to pay the fall, too. Right? Oh, they have to pay the fall, too. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay, well, I'm asked that a lot, whether or not, how far they have to bring it up to date. <laughs> they can still owe the fall. Can still hold the ball. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Kurt? I wanted to share with you the fair board set the dates for the Park County Fair for next summer. It's going to start July 9th and go through the 16th. Uh, the other thing that was uh, decided this week, we will have camping at the fairgrounds during the Covered Bridge Festival. We've had a lot of people call about that so the fair board decided to go ahead and have that they're going to keep the shower house closed but everything else will do good good okay thank you katie uh everything's going well reassessment all we have left is the town of montezuma which will probably start late october early november um, we've got somebody going to be out on maternity leave that's doing that. So um, we had our informal appeals hearings. Had a lot of good information brought in in those. This is the first year that we've had almost almost everybody bring in good information to tell us why we are incorrect. Um, that's always a good thing um, because we do mass appraisal for those that don't know or those that are watching in on the camera. We do mass appraisal. We don't do a one-on-one -on -one appraisal like you would hire an appraisal of a person to do. We do it in groups. So you have to tell me why you don't fit in that group. So we got a lot of good information, so I should be sending out some information in the next few weeks to those people on what decisions we've made and changes we've made based on the information they brought. And then if they don't agree with the value we came up with, they can move on to the PDFO board. Um, we had our IBTR hearing, as I told you last time, on July 30th. We still have not received any kind of indication from the state on, on their decision. So, still waiting on that. And we have Merle Heinlein's IBTR hearing. It will be October 21st at 9 a.m., I believe. <clears throat> also a virtual or telephonic hearing. So, otherwise, everything's going actually really, really well. Good. I'd like to introduce Jane Callisey. She's with the Solid Waste District. And uh, Dan had talked to her, and I'd ask if they, uh, she could come maybe answer any questions you guys might have had about Solid District. So if you got anything for her, or she can share what the... Sure, you're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. Go ahead. I was going to get to you. I was just trying to get the department heads out here because I want them to go to work. We so. didn't wait. I didn't know if you... Were yeah, I knew, I knew who she was. Yeah, all right. We'll let the sheriff go, and then I'll get to you next. I sheriff. just have a few updates, I guess. Um, we billed 157729 so far for the year for DOC and other counties. Um, 13950 is what we billed out for August, so we're still on average for 17525 per month for the year. Uh, we are in the process of applying for the USDA vehicle grant. Um, there's still some money left over from the last cycle, so we're hoping to get into that and if we're awarded it, then maybe we might get the money a little bit quicker than normal. Uh, served 4,231 meals so far in the jail this year, which is down, but it's COVID related. And collected $16,085.67 in other fees for year to date. Getting for minutes, sex vendor fees, stuff like that. <coughs> That's all I have. Okay, any questions for the sheriff? Okay, Jane, if you want to introduce yourself and go right ahead. Yeah, I'm Jane Policy. I'm the executive director of Western Solid Waste District. I just brought you some information. I think most people know we do the recycling um, at Shopco, the old Shopco building. We also have Toxoy Days, which we have coming up uh, in two days. And on the Saturday from 8 to 1. So
So I just have some information about our district because there might be some other things that we do that we don't know that we do, um, some behind the scenes stuff. We do, some, we do a lot of education with schools and public education. We have grants for schools. Um, there's a programs page on page four that kind of tells you the, the main things that we do in the three counties, the rural recycling drop-off centers. Um, we have electronics recycling day here in Park County, usually in June. We have a yard waste drop-off site in Greencastle, um, Christmas tree recycling, we have five locations that we do that. And then the uh, page five is just kind of a recap of our Toxaway day, so you can kind of see the type of materials and the volumes that we collect every year. Um, the next page is just education and grant information. And then we have our budget page with our capital reserve and our county contribution information that you might be more interested in. Uh, that just shows what we're, we're basically reducing our capital reserve by about 115000 every year to cover the shortfall and what we're asking the counties to contribute to pay for these programs. Um, our current budget expenditures from last year was $2.38, and of that we're asking each county to pay $1.75 <coughs> per person. So that's basically just the overall. You can look at this at your leisure. Um, page after page 8, it's not a page number, but it says attachment A. It's a white sheet that looks like this. Mm -hmm. That kind of gives you a breakdown that I gave to the commissioners that shows just what the contract cost would be for just the Toxaway Day, the Electronics Recycling Day, and the Rockville Recycling Bins. Uh, so the annual total, just just an average, is 60250 And of that, you're currently contributing 30343 So you're paying about half of the contract cost and none of the just day-to-day, -day, everyday costs for, you know, staffing and advertising and insurance and all those type things. And then there's a, a breakdown at the bottom that kind of gives you an idea, a recap of what um, volumes we bring in, uh, the electronics day. This year we brought in a little over 9,000 pounds in the four hours. Um, the talks away day for 2019. 86,915 pounds of tires, appliances, e-waste, e-waste, I'm sorry, is electronics, um, and household hazardous waste. And then the Rural Recycling Center in Rockville, we collected 235 tons just for that site alone. That is our busiest site out of all three counties, just so you're aware. And we do pick that up five times a week. So this is the only one in the county where the other two have multiples. Right, and we wanted to put more, but it's just cost prohibitive, unfortunately, because you can see we're spending over 30000 just for the one yeah, sure. bin, and we don't even spend that, I don't think, all together in the other counties with all the sites combined. So we're actually, we're actually spending more on this one site than the multiple sites of the other counties. Well, is that because of the volume coming through? It's the number volume. Of holes and yes, stuff? it's volume, and it's also the transport fees, because it's, it's one of the farthest. Cost. Exactly. It's one of the farthest. Um, Montgomery County is leaving, right? That's what they're saying. I've not, I don't know officially, we won't know until we get the, uh, they have to do a legal obligations, fact finding type analysis, and once we get that, and then once we come to an agreement with them, then they'll make that final decision. But yes, that is their intention as well. Yeah, I've seen their, from yeah. what I understand, they've, had, they've passed That's a resolution right. today. Yeah. Yes, they have passed both resolutions. Correct. They're in the process. Mm -hmm. Right. So that would make Putnam County the controlling yes. unit, right? Right. Um, I think it's like 69% to 31%. Yeah, they're between certainly a bigger county than us. Mm -hmm. so. um, I, I was going to ask it, are they happy because, you know, this has whittled down from a lot of counties to... Now it has, and it's nothing that we're doing. No, it's, I'm not saying I mean, that at all. It's, and I can say that because they've not had any complaints about anything. They're, they feel that they can do it cheaper. I know my heart, that's probably not going to happen, but they're yeah, not asking me for actual figures. They're just <clears throat> estimating what they think it's going to cost them. And I think especially with hazardous programs, you don't really know what it's about until you get into it, and then maybe you're I'm wishing you hadn't done that, but... It's usually the largest county because they have the biggest piece of the pie, basically, to contribute. Everyone that's Hendricks County left because they were controlling all the funding. And it's nothing against them. They just 
None of the other counties were contributing at that time. So for 14 years, Hendricks County paid for everybody, all five counties. Is that off landfill fees? Landfill fees, yeah. right. And that was wonderful. I wish we were still doing that because that was, sure. it helps everyone. Um, and then Morgan County then was almost 50% of the remaining four counties because they have like 70,000 people. Mm -hmm. So their, their portion was quite large in keeping it up so they left because they had they wanted to combine some other services mm -hmm. um, how does the balance of your funding break down in the what other, way? well the other 50 percent where, where are you coming up with the other 50 percent of your budget the other just, just from the government or uh, all of our money comes from basically just the county contributions a dollar 75 a person okay. we really we um heritage environmental helps us offset costs, they don't contribute anything, but we used to get money from their landfill, and then the, the special waste site closed, so we no longer get money from the landfill. So in exchange, they basically donate some services towards the Toxaway days. So it's kind of an in-kind, um, where we're not expending it, but we're not getting that money in either. But all of our income is really just county contributions a small amount from the yard waste user fees and uh, interest income, basically. That's it. So there's no, there's and then no the capital reserve is what we fall back on, okay. which is a little over nine hundred thousand. There's no fees then uh, for the the site there in in Putnam, the hazardous waste site in Putnam. There's no landfill fees that come to the district. No, nope. we get nothing from that. Away from talking to the other commissioners in Montgomery County, I know their intention is, and Jane's not sure their numbers are accurate, they intend to contract directly with the people that West Central contracts with and cut out West Central, so they're kind of cutting out the middleman on that. So they think they can save several thousand dollars by doing it directly. Well, most of your most of your contractors are in, in Crawford's still around. Right? The recycling is. Yeah. Yes. And it's, it's, uh, Walton and... Walden. Walden. Yes, Walden. Yeah, Dan, Dan Walden. Right. Um, and Heritage is in Indianapolis, and New Genesis is also part of the Toxic Days, mm -hmm. and they're out of Mooresville, uh, Oregon County. So I see. Do you have for selling any of the uh, recyclables? No, the, the markets are terrible right yeah, now. Yeah. And the prices are going to go up next year. I know yes, and you know. You know. I think Don's a commissioner in Clay County, Cotton County. Don Walton, where's he? He's a commissioner someplace. No, this is from this a recycler from Crawford, so we're talking about. I Don Walton, but I thought he was a commissioner from Clay County or someplace. It's Putnam County. Putnam County, okay. Yeah. In Putnam? Yeah. Commissioner in Putnam? Yep. Mm -hmm. Always has been. Yeah, Don Walton, for a long time. He's going out this year. I think he's old on me. I know. It's shocking. So I see when a when a member leaves, why well, they forfeit basically any property or anything. Yes. So Montgomery will be forfeit. They're not going to get a, receive a cash payout or anything. They do that. I mean, our commissioners here, Jim. Did you guys ever decide anything about are we, are we going to have more pickups here because of the overflow, or did you guys deal with that, or what did you decide? Yeah, we, we met with that and. Uh, the uh, schedule that I had was different from the truck driver, different from what their actual schedule is, but um, they pick up the cardboard two times a week and the recycling three times a week. We had a mess out there a couple weeks ago. I do want to say that uh, Jane really responded well to that. They had an extra pickup, um, came for the cardboard, and an extra pickup came for the uh, recycling. I met the guy there at 930 because there was a heck of a mess. There was stuff piled every place. The truck driver actually stayed and helped me a half hour or so to uh, pick that stuff and put it in the, new, in the new bin that came. It was about half full, so there was a lot of stuff on the ground. So we didn't know if, mixed, if, if a pickup was missed, which was my thought, because I, it looked the same to me through Friday, but may or may not happen, I don't know. But one of the concerns were maybe some businesses were using uh, the recycling bins, and it's not for businesses, it's just for residents only. The schools, I know, were putting uh, paper in the cardboard bin, but they were putting, I stopped one time, the guy was doing it, didn't know who it was, and he said they had permission from someone, so long as they put it in plastic bags, and they must take the plastic bags out when they got to the recycling, but that was something that Jane was unaware of, so she's talked to the schools not, not to be using the recycling bins, they need to make their own contract with someone to do their own recycling, rather. so it's intended for residential use only is what they're planning for. Mm -hmm. So there's no agreements that the district has with the schools then to serve? No. So you talk to Mike no. about that. We have grants for the schools, but that's separate. It has nothing to do with the actual 
collection of the recycling. I can say since that night when we were there that uh, late fixing up, everything's been fine. Pickups, pickups going washing down. Pickups have been on time. And there's been nothing on the ground. And I did have to climb in the cardboard bin one night. I had a guy came in. They dumped a bunch off. Nice kids, but didn't know who they were. Big uh, big box full of cardboard. It was full. And they were leaving, and I didn't know who they were. Of course, I got a call from somebody. said that they thought somebody was dumping on the site. So I dropped what I was doing, went up there. The truck was leaving. I didn't know who they were, took a picture of the license plate, and I went in, and they, they were concerned. I was taking a picture of their license plate like they had done something wrong. And I said, well, you're not supposed to leave this here on the, on the ground like that. It can't fit in. But I said, I think we can get it. And so I climbed up in the bin and smashed it down, and we made our food with our cardboard out of in the bin at the top level. That was about the only time we had a, had a problem with the cardboard. <coughs> there any chance of bringing bigger control off? They, no. I've tried doing that, and that's the way that they have They don't work on weekends, so there's no option of getting weekend calls. We actually had what Jim's referring to. I actually had contacted just because I have great relationships with that that business. They actually came out on Sunday on their day off and did that. So, but we want to try to keep. You know, we don't want that happening. And obviously, we want to keep all of our sites neat and clean. But it takes everybody. And and if, if businesses are using it, if schools are using it, that's not what it's designed for. And they do fill up too quickly that way. Just think of the volume that we have out there. If we didn't have that, half that volume would be in the ditch or something. Yeah, it is. It's a good service. Um, people utilize and keeps it from in the landfill or the roadside or whatever. So you receive. So all of your funding is just by the counties. It's not Basically. through towns or like the city of Crawfordsville yeah. or any of them. Any of the cities the don't. They don't. Contribute. It's just a county type right. of funding. Because they feel like if we ask them, then they're d then we're double dipping. Sure, that makes sense. Makes sense. Well, I just I thought mm -hmm. that was how it was, but. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the page behind the sheet that we we're just looking at, there is a state report that gives you an idea of what other solid waste districts are spending per capita, so you can see how low we are compared to most. The state average is fifteen sixty seven a year, or I mean a person, and we're at. 238. Now that will go up, obviously. Montgomery County pulls up just because our oh, yeah. we'll be losing 41 percent of our population. I don't think they are doing it because we get a lot of calls from their residents. Yeah. Well, they're the lowest at 57 cents, so well, that's it right. make I you wonder to... if there's anything yes. happening. But I don't know. The ones that have little excess by, they don't provide any um, hazardous waste collections, any talks away days or electronics days, and those are the most expensive programs. So that's why a lot of times, if you see really low numbers, it's because there, there's not a lot of programs going on there. <laughs> well, talks away days are always popular here. I mean, yeah. I did it myself, and there's always a talking about it earlier. Good again, yeah. I, I, it, it certainly is popular. Things to take under myself, sir. Okay, is there any other questions for Jane? No, thank you for coming. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate, it. It. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Jim, is there anybody else down the hall or anything this way? Chris. Yeah, Chris, there's, there's a lot about drinks. Yeah. I mean, what's it about? Is this? Just an update on the grants. Oh. Stuff. Some new ones that are working. Um, while we're waiting on him, Julie called and she wasn't going to be able to make it, but Larry had asked a couple questions, so she wanted me to answer those two. Um, there was no expectation what that, she that she ended up sending to, yeah. but we'll go ahead and say it. But, um, there was no ex there's no expected revenue hit to the ambulance service for the cancellation of the Bridge Festival. Uh, most of their runs during the Bridge Festival are where they show up and they don't actually take anybody to to uh, the hospital, so those aren't billable events. Uh, expect to get revenue, as she's identified in her letter, um, to continue to outpace last year as Q3 and Q4 would be collections from Q2 and Q3 runs, and as you obviously know from what she's been saying, that her run volume's been very high. Um, 
They had 12 runs yesterday, just just yesterday itself. Um, so she expects that uh, the revenues will come in as forecast and be ahead of last year. So she wanted that said for all of you. To, Okay, Chris, you're on. Um, more than I want to give you an update on uh, the CARES funding and then two other grants that we're working with that deal with CARES funding. So right now, with the uh, we got over half a million dollars in that CARES fund allotment, and we've uh, requested forty-seven thousand back from the state, and we've gotten thirty thousand. That's seventeen thousand we should get back sometime over the next two weeks. Um, that leaves us with about. Uh, a little over $440,000 left out there to, to buy stuff. So after so many months, we've only spent, uh, or only used up or obligated about 100000 to kind of give you how much money's left in that account. Um, the, uh, we have the International Crim or the Indiana Criminal Justice Institute grant, which was about $38,000. That grant is unique in that it can be used next year. The plan for that is to use that money to supplement what the county already spends on courthouse security, which would be 21 hours a week, to buy the, the rest of the 40 hours. So there's somebody there eight hours a day, five days a week. And then we recently got information about a local health department IT grant, which was $75,000, to buy computers, scanners for the health department. And uh, we're working to find stuff to buy on that. And uh, those, are, those are the big the big things that are going on. We talked a little bit about this before uh, the meeting, and I, I'm gonna, I just want to put it out there is uh, there's the consideration at the state level of uh, the possibility that Indiana will adopt guidelines to allow some public safety salaries to be paid out of this CARES Act funding. So we could end up in a situation where we are able to uh, move some of the funding or some of the salary money that's been spent for public safety people over to that and uh, not in the appropriation that it's in now. So we'll see if the state does that. But. <coughs> That would help. Yeah. <laughs> Laura, did you want to talk about this a little bit? This might be a good time. Uh, well, maybe you better wait here, that's Chris, if you would, please. Yeah. Um, what I did is I sent in a proposal for to go digital. And it's, digital a, port, for what? it's a portal that will go digital for the transfer books. And that would make all of our transfer books all the way back to the 1800s to go be online. So then once we would go digital, this would go for the abstractors. If we were closed, anything would happen. The researchers or anybody that's doing any other research, they would have the option to go into this portal and research all their transfers for the abstracts and things like that. So then that way if we were closed, they'd be able to go ahead and get the deeds, the deeds done. They could get the mortgage loans completed and other things that they would need to do. On this portal that I had just received this morning, there's a price estimate um, of $35,232.93. There's also fees of $1,489. And then I notice in Section 8, there's some other um, expenses. Once we get this up and going, there will be a monthly expense of around... I believe $550 a month to keep the portal. Um, I passed out the information here that I received this morning to you. I have used the portal before in my past job. And the, in my past job, we were all paper. Once we had the portal at the state, then everything was scanned in and we were paperless and you could pull up all the documents that you want. Once you have a portal, the everything would, could go paperless. We could also use this portal for um, payroll. We could use it for the accounts payable. 
um, deductions would be a really good source because taxpayers would be able to go online and file their deductions and everything would be going through this portal. This, um, the other counties have <coughs> used a CARE grant to get their portal to go to be financed through the CARE Grant Act. <coughs> and with that CARE Grant Act, Act, it would just help because of the COVID-19. <coughs> so the same company that's going to scan the books and put them in there also hosts a uh, for lack of a better way of putting this, a local government portal? Correct. There's lots of other counties that already have this and already use this. Real concern, like always, on all those kind of things, and Chris has brought that up several times, is once the COVID money runs out, you, you want to be careful about being saddled with that five or $600. Right, $6,600 a year, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, that would be a flat book fund expenditure that so, we could, you know, it would be there. There's... Good that revenue coming into that, um, you would no longer then have to buy transfer books or any of the supplies and stuff down there, so there would be some savings involved with that, not buying new books from time to time. But, um, and later in the future, This is the way everything's going. I mean, let's oh, it is. I'm sure we understand yeah. that. It's, we've got to eventually get away from paper the same as everybody else does. And, and the more of these services you can put online for people to do for them, to do for themselves or do more conveniently. The less traffic you have to the courthouse for yeah. all kinds of other things that go with that. So I don't know, I mean, I don't know if anybody else does this to tell you if this is a good quote or a bad quote. I have no idea. Yeah, are there others I've, out there that I've we... I've checked in with two other companies and I haven't got their prices okay. back yet. I just got this price back this morning. Okay. So I'm hoping by next week I'd have the other two quotes. Yeah, I would are. certainly. I mean, this is going to be the, the commissioner's decision as much more than anything. Well, yeah, you'll have to submit it to that group, but both Chris and Commissioner Meese and whoever else and Cindy Todd and others are on to see if they're willing to uh, pursue it through the CARES Act. Will that go through? And will that go I, through? I, I think. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. I mean, it, it supports remote work. It makes it so the courthouse is closed down again. All the stuff that Laura said. We'll, we'll run it through and send it to the legal people to look at it. But I think this is a pretty common thing that other okay. other people have used. Well, yeah, you just need to follow up with the process like everyone else has done. I mean, I, I'm glad to know up front because certainly the monthly, uh, ongoing monthly fees is, a, is a, we need to be aware of. But I think there are ways to pay for it. So. Yeah, and this is one of those monthly fees that I, I personally can support because yeah. it's, it does have a value oh, okay. down the road. For, oh, for yeah. yeah. So, so I would say get some other quotes and submit them to okay. Chris and the commissioners and go from there. Okay, okay. thanks, sir. Okay, thanks, sir. Okay, we're ready to move on. Uh, minutes for August 13th meeting in your packet. Motion approved. Second. Motion been made. Second. Approve the minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Most of these additionals we talked about at budget, but these we might are run, all run, budget them, run through them quickly for the audience. Surveyor uh, corner, Cornerstone Perpetuation 3100. We made this we, when we had our budget hearings. We talked with Greg about uh, uh, he had three more locations to on his schedule for this year to. Uh, Relocate the cornerstone. Um, so that was thirty-one hundred dollars was to cover that. So that's what that appropriation is. Riverboat uh, sixty-seven thousand is the ambulance remount for Med Three, if I remember right, uh, that we talked about at the budget hearings. That went up a thousand dollars from what she had asked for in the appropriation. She got a, a new quote from them right after the meeting, and that's that's it's sixty-six. Nine something, so there's that number. And the local health trust fund appropriation of nine thousand for the part time nurses is, is to create the line and put some funding in it from that uh, that current fund for the additional hours uh, and the additional salary per hour through the end balance of the year for the for the part time nurse that uh, was presented uh, at budget hearings as well. Um, 
that was to have the vehicle in order for the commissioner, and I believe you guys did approve that change from your from your uh, side of this. So that's what we have before us. So moved. Second. Most been made and seconded to approve the additional appropriations. All in favor? Aye. 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 Transfers. Yeah, Julie had a couple salary transfers. The ambulance service um, slightly overspent the part time EMT line to the general fund and the ambulance department uh, by $31.86. Um, so, having a void in the administrative assistant one position for a few weeks earlier in the year had some extra funding in there. So, I moved that to balance that line out for the balance of the year. Uh, then the overtime line, as you well know, we balance these part-time and overtime salaries for the ambulance service between public safety and the general fund, depending on the year. Um, so she's requested to move uh, 25000 from overtime into part-time EMTs. And this is, as she explained it, uh, there's been, uh, you know, some... She's had some open slots at times through the year, and then the run volume has been exceptional. Um, she believes that these two transfers will get to the end of the year. <coughs> so, uh, and it's, as we all know, to guess every year on this. Okay. okay, any questions about the transfers? Motion to approve transfers. Motion's been made and second to approve the transfers. All there? Aye. 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 No jury pay, no reappropriation of funds. <laughs> Committee reports, no redevelopment commission meeting, planning and zoning. No meeting. Courthouse security, no meeting. New business. Um, as far as the library appointment, I did speak to the librarian, and we had appointed Judy Brook uh, in January. Uh, of 19 and her term would expire 1231 of 22. Apparently they did not receive the form or <coughs> excuse me, was misplaced or something. So really the only thing we need to do is just fill out a new form and submit to the library. So she's been appointed and has been participating but they lack the form. So the auditor has a new form and I'm just going to, with your permission, Sign the form again, and yeah, we looked it up. The man, we looked it up, and they're in agreement that they they have to have this form, and it's apparently is lost or so. That's where we are in that. And then, Roy, you want to talk about the yeah, state uh, the, the state other part. library requires that the libraries, the local libraries, um, complete a form that that basically will designate. Uh, a, an elected fiscal body in the county to serve as the fiscal body for that particular library district um, in certain cases. Uh, as you will recall, we used to do non-binding reviews for all government units, and then we just did them, if I remember right, for the libraries, and we can still do them for the libraries if we so desire. But there are a couple cases where a library must submit their budget to a fiscal body who is designated for adoption. And it's basically if their cash on hand and revenue is greater than 150% of their proposed budget. Um, that is one case. There are then, I think, a capital, or a capital expenditure case or two that might fall into that. But that is the general uh, uh, general uh, most likely case, you might say. So, being that the Park County Public Library, or formerly known as the Rockville Public Library, uh, serves all of the county with the exception of, uh, I believe, one township, uh, their declaration of the fiscal body will be us. And all we have to do is acknowledge that we will serve that role as being the, uh, the fiscal body that would cover the majority of their service area, or all of it in this case. So that's the story with that. So I would make a motion to approve the acceptance of the county council being designated as the fiscal body for the uh, Park County Public Library. Second. 
second. Okay, motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, moving on to the ordinance, yes. We have an amendment to the salary ordinance. This is for the part-time nurse position that we just did the additional appropriation on. Uh, that line was not in the salary ordinance. Um, that was adopted in uh, last year with the budget. So there is an amendment to that line in the amount of $8,550. So I got that completely to the, to the number. Uh, it's for 10 hours per week at $30 per hour, 15 hours per week at $10 per hour. And essentially what the, was agreed to uh, presented to us was that uh, she would work at 10 additional hours and the hourly rate would go from 20 to $30 an hour. And this is only effective until the end of this year. I confirm that with the sanitarian and as well, this is only applicable to the balance of this year, and it's in response to the to the virus. And my understanding is they will work to submit that for reimbursement as well. Approval. Second. Okay. Motion and made and seconded to uh, amend the salary ordinance. All in favor? Aye. 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 So then that has to go to the paper, then and be published. That one has to be published. That will have to be published. Can I get that published? Just send that over whenever it gets published and be done with that one. Okay. Build that right. And then we go up with them. They want a signature and I want you. Oh, we need more than one? Yeah. Okay, well, give me that other back because I had to fill it all out too. <coughs> fill that. All right. That's all right. I'll do it in a minute. Okay. Uh, we have our budget meeting. Is uh, the 18th this month at one 18th at one o'clock? One o'clock here. Here. So uh, we, we should have the uh, we should have the uh, local income tax numbers to work with on the 15th, which is two steps in, right? Something like that. Uh, so I'll plug that in real quick and have everything ready for the 18th at 1. The changes that we talked about at the last budget hearing have been put in the sheet for the time being. Um, and then uh, we obviously, as we stated at that uh, hearing, we have not dealt with the, any salaries or any of those types of things, but the other things that we talked about are in there. Um, so we're close. We're close. We'll adopt on the 8th of uh, October in 10th. Okay, is there anything, do you have anything else to, I do. anybody else? Okay, go ahead. I do. I, I want to give our broadband committee a little credit publicly. Uh, last week we were informed, uh, the state and community, that uh, through the Next Level Connections broadband grant that three projects in Park County received funding. Uh, those three projects are, are three of the uh, projects that JOINC submitted. Uh, they will uh, extend uh, broadband service to uh, Bridgeton, uh, Judson, and Niceville. And this amounts to almost a hundred or uh, almost a million dollars worth of, uh, of grant funding into these projects in the state or in the county. So uh, I want to give our committee a lot of credit here. Um, because this is a direct result of those of some of those meetings that we had in the early parts of this. We had provider meetings, we had them with joint as well. Um, and got them thinking about what they could do. Um, and that's their own words that they wouldn't have even thought of this if they'd not been uh, approached about it. So it's a win for those areas. It opens the door for uh, some other opportunities as they'll uh, They've got the fiber backbone to help with some of that, and there's, I think there'll be more come along eventually down the road with that. So, to all the committee, of course I serve on that committee, but I, this one's not me, it's all of us, and so we did well with it. And then I have a question for the auditor on COVID reimbursements. Are we, we have gotten some of that funding back at this point, correct? That is correct. All right, and they are... 
being reappropriated to the correct to the, to the line correct. items or whatever else that do you have a, are you keeping a record of yes I am of those okay. and it's on the budget status as well okay I would I, I would like I think it would be good to uh, to have a summary of that at our meetings until this is over with of what we okay. brought in um, and where it's gone back to so that we I'd be more glad to supply that to you each meeting yeah I think I would be it don't have to be anything elaborate but I think it would be a good thing to, to I'll just give you the budget status each meeting for that one fund uh, and some of that though is getting reappropriated back to tax bearing funds is that correct or not that is correct yeah so like We're public safety and the general fund some of these are are reappropriations right. back in the lines but some are uh, uh, spending that's being moved to the grant fund right there's right. two different things happening so what's happening is that we've already spent the money in the general funds and public safety and all that the grant money has came in we put it into the grant fund of 8905 as we have received the money we put it in the revenues and we put it into the correct appropriation lines the money that Chris has showed me the receipts for then I go in there to the general fund and I transfer those dollar amounts out of that general fund into the grant so fund. you're moving all of the <coughs> expenses out of out and into the grant fund versus just the grant fund and so like uh, local health trust is a grant funded fund and that was where we spent money from EPE and stuff and I know that's how that one was supposed to work but you're not moving money from the from the CARES Act grant into the general fund no. or whatever you're no. moving the expense out of it right that correct? So that makes the uh, general fund and raise it back, back and increase the appropriation and balance and all yes. that stuff that's the way this, per state board accounts, that's the way state board They're doing all of them that way then? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I would like to be kept informed on how that's all. I'll done. be more glad to make a spreadsheet, whatever you'd like. Uh, just something simple yeah, so that we can have an idea of what, how we're doing with it. That's all. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, anything Thank you. else? I got nothing. I'm good. Motion adjourned. Second. Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you.